Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy Sean. What's going on, man? This is my reaction video to a veteran that had served in Iraq and Afghanistan. And I'm going to tell you guys, this video, um, I did watch some of it and I knew right away I needed to react to it because I'm mind blown. And it's just, I'm, I always get mind blown because only when I hear of stories of veterans that have such a similarity to me, you know what I mean? When I, when I really listen to this guy talk, he's like, he's on point with so much um, about what we go through when we, when we come home. I know everybody that serves doesn't have PTSD. I know that not everybody with PTSD is only a combat veteran, but in this situation, we are talking about a combat veteran that served in Afghanistan and Iraq. I served two tours in Afghanistan and the similarities is crazy, man. It's crazy. And I think that you guys are going to really enjoy this video as far as education goes. Uh, just, just an amazing video as far as what this guy is going through and and for a lot of you combat veterans you're definitely going to relate and so let's go ahead and get it started um yeah i'm 38 years old i am a veteran of the wars in iraq and afghanistan in total my deployments were 27 months two tours in iraq and one in afghanistan the first time i felt it, ptsd is when i actually got, first got back to stateside you know i felt nervous around people I would see and hear things. So on my second tour, I got injured in Afghanistan. They sent me to Qatar. And by the way, that was the first time that I ever thought in my brain that, damn, I should have joined the Air Force, right? Because it was such a beautiful base and it was so just, I don't know, it, it was crazy. So if you've ever been to Qatar, you need to check it out. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful country. But, um, I had to go to Qatar to get a MRI done on my, on my leg. And while I was there, obviously, since I'm on an air force base and, and I'm not in combat, I'm over there for medical reasons, they take away your weapon. And I ended up being there about three and a half weeks. No lie. Literally the first two or three hours being there with no weapon, I was already freaking out. I was nervous around people. I didn't know what to say to people. I was feeling jittery. I remember that whole day I used to, even for like a week, I was talking to other veterans, other soldiers that were there. Uh, I was like, hey, uh, something doesn't feel right. You know, I feel like, you know, something's not right with me. I'm feeling nervous. I'm feeling like my brain is going 100 miles per hour. And I'm in this place where it's not a combat zone, but I am in country. And... I don't know, dude. It was so crazy. And I understand exactly what this guy's talking about. He's talking about being here at home side, which a lot of us, you know, we feel at home. But, yeah, just, I can relate so much to that. And even still today, a lot of us veterans feel this way because you'll catch us have our back against the wall at a restaurant or, you know, they just feel nervous in big crowds. I mean, this is so much, man. This guy's right there. on point. I would reach for my weapon in the middle of the night. <laughs> See? Exactly. You know, having friends that are not there anymore. reaching for your weapon brothers that are not there anymore it's just different i felt worth this the first couple of years i was back of course man because we have purpose to, to just to numb the pain stop look when we leave combat when we leave the military in general a lot of times for us man this is what we we fought for right we wanted to be a soldier we wanted to be a marine a navy man, an airman whatever we wanted to serve in the military and for a lot of us that went to combat one or two or three times four or five, whatever, that was our purpose, right? That was our passion. That is something that we wanted to do. And then when that's taken from you for whatever reason, dude, you lose your purpose. And, and, and I did for a long time. And I think this is exactly what he's talking about, man. You just, you know, you lose your purpose and then you start turning to things that kind of turn off that switch, you know, alcohol, drugs, uh, doing reckless behavior because you just, you, you you feel numb to everything. You're just like, you know what? You, you don't have that purpose. You don't have any drive anymore. No, no real feel like you have any real reason to live. So, uh, damn, he's on point. He, he's I'm definitely being on point. The person I need to be at that moment for whoever needed me at that time, because I wanted to drown myself. You're afraid to admit that, that you are having nightmares, that you are nervous around people that, 
you'll rather take the long way home because the way you get home has boxes or there's trash around there because you're afraid it's gonna be an ID. Finally, wow. I can tell you straight up how many times, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've driven down the road and I've just looked to the side of the road and seen a trash bag or I seen a box or maybe a big crater on the side of the road. And the first thought was, wow, that could be an IED or that is an IED. Uh, I remember you can actually ask my wife on this when we were in Columbia, South Carolina, and I was driving down in the, you know, the city area and they had this big, they used to have these like, uh, big metal, uh, plates in the middle of the road. I don't know what they were covering up, but I remember running one over and it came, it kind of had this loud bang to it when you ran it over. And dude, let me tell you, I literally almost crashed that car and I was sweating. I was panting. My heart was racing. And I looked at my wife. I said, look, I'm about to freak out because I swear to God, I thought I just ran over an IED. Like guys, this stuff is real, man. When you see these things and you hear about these explosions and you see these explosions and you're in these explosions, that stuff just doesn't turn off. It doesn't turn off. You have to learn to cope. You have to learn to find different techniques to help you through this shit, man. Um, this shit's real. This is this guy is talking about it, and he's on point, guys. I started listening to my mom and, and my dad. You know, they tell me go to the VA, me call. You know, they, they send me to a psychiatrist and to talk to my feelings. And I did. I gone to a couple like group uh, meetings at the VA. You know, to, to talk good. to other veterans and stuff like that. It just because at that moment, you know, you feel like there's the only one second that know what you've been through. Another point I want to make, guys, is he's absolutely right. Uh, a lot of people are like, why won't these veterans talk, right? Or especially like a spouse, like your wife or somebody. You know, they're like, they can't get us to open up. They can't get us to talk. And it's like, you just don't understand. You weren't there. You don't understand it. And then a lot of times, like myself, I've tried to talk to her, tried to, you know, just bring her in a little bit, and she doesn't understand it. And then it turns into a fight because you get angry because you want somebody to understand you. You want somebody to feel your pain. You want somebody to know what you're going through. But when you, it's the same way with doctors at the VA, you know, this is just one little problem. Like there's not enough veterans at the VA that are working there that will actually understand what you're going through. You know what I mean? Um, it, it's just crazy, man. So yeah, when you get veterans together, we want to talk, we'll talk about it, you know, to a certain level, you know, cause some of us still don't want to just talk to anybody. People ask me questions, you know. A lot Great of times, been the questions, you know. It's just some people come up to me and and they ask me, "Oh man, how many people did you kill in Iraq?" Or, I right, listen. I know I'm stopping it a lot. I right, listen. <laughs> I just want to say this really quick. You do not ask us how many people we killed. I don't care if it's your family member. I don't care if you're joking. I don't care if it's your best friend. You don't ask them how many people have you killed. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I've been out. Uh, my last time I did combat was in 2010 and 11. And since 2011, I've probably talked to thousands of veterans. And that conversation right there about how many people we've killed has never came up. Maybe a couple of times talking with like somebody that's like my damn near best friend and have somewhat of a conversation of that. But that's just something you don't talk about. We don't talk about... We don't talk about that. So don't ask. How did you feel? How, how was it? Somebody finds out I'm a veteran or they talk to me and they're like, well, good for you that you went over there and fought. It's like, no, it wasn't good for me. I, you know, I came back damaged. I, mean, I encourage you guys to talk to veterans. You're not broken, you brother. To talk to your father, to your mother, to whomever you know that went over there. Just talking to them and making them feel, making them feel like that's another you're good here, point. Dude. Like you're here, you know, like that's another good point I want to bring up is that if you do have a veteran in your life, if you have somebody that's there with you that served, make them feel normal, right? Make them feel normal. Don't make them feel like they're broken. You know, yeah, acknowledge the fact that maybe your veteran has some problems struggling with depression or anxiety and let's address those things. Of course, let's try to get that person some help, but at the same time, don't treat them like they're broken. Don't treat them differently. That's one thing about us veterans is that we just want to fit in, right? We want to feel normal like everybody else. You don't have to worry anymore. You know, we, we love you. We, we, we're happy you're here with us. You know, it's, 
it's little things like that. Just you know, not not treating them like they're broken. Exactly. And I'm not gonna say it's easy. Exactly. It is hard for for. It's not easy. It's hard to, to try to talk to a veteran. You know, just to my fellow veterans. So say thank you and know that you're appreciated. Know that that it's not easy, but if you're still haven't gone seek help, go, go get help. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much, my brother. You know, this was an amazing video, guys. I encourage all of you to do more research like this. Look up some more videos. Um, I got a whole bunch more coming from you guys that, uh, like I said, my biggest idea, of, my biggest goal besides is to help veterans that are suffering and, and stuff like that is to educate and try to inspire and motivate. And if you guys ever uh, want to read a self-guide book, a self-help book that um, I wrote it's called Veteran Mindset 2.0, you can actually find it on Amazon uh, or Google Veteran Mindset 2.0. Check out the reviews. Uh, it, it goes in. It doesn't really talk about my life story, but it talks. I, I turned my life story into lessons and I'm all about mindset and how to how to change uh, your mindset into a, a 2.0. And so if you're a veteran and you're watching this, or even if you're not, and you just suffer with PTSD or any kind of other mental health and you want to learn, or if you just want to learn how to, you know, talk and, and, and understand your veteran a little better, check out the book. Uh, I appreciate you guys, man. Thank you so much. Uh, I got a plenty more reaction videos coming up again. If you guys also, if you guys have any videos, like this or any other ones that you want to see me talk about or react to send them to me man i love to watch them and react to them you guys have a blessed night and we'll see you on the next one guys later